Hello everyone, so I am filming a book haul today. You know I love to share books that I have recently purchased slash been gifted. It's honestly just one of my favourite things to do, especially when I'm in a really big reading mood, which I'm currently in. I just really feel that love and appreciation for books, especially recently. Like obviously I always feel that, but I definitely go through periods where I just appreciate it that tiny bit more and I'm in that moment right now. So I'm really excited about the books that I'm sharing and obviously hope to get to them ASAP. As always, I have different categories. So first we have Book of the Month who are sponsoring this video. So thank you so much to them. Look how freaking cute this new box is. It says, warning, this box may elicit excitement. So yeah, I love Book of the Month. If you don't know, they are a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers and they are truly amazing. Basically, they work to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover new books that they love. So obviously I'm on board with that and I have read some amazing books through Book of the Month. All the new book releases can obviously get overwhelming because you don't know what's out there or what you should be reading. So basically the team at Book of the Month helps readers by vetting hundreds of books every month and then they give readers their choice from a curated selection of new and early release book titles. So basically that means that you'll spend more time reading and less time researching. And they always choose books from different genres, from authors from different backgrounds. It's definitely a diverse selection and every month I'm just like, wow, how do I choose? So they have seven selections for March. So those include Lone Woman, The Soulmate, The Adventures of Amina al Surafi. Wayward, The London Seance Society, Rootless, and Last Russian Doll. So my selection would be between these two books. Rootless by Crystal Zara Apaya is a book that I mentioned in my most anticipated releases video and I was so excited when they had it as a selection because I was obviously planning to read this and I'm so excited that I have this beautiful book of the month edition. And basically this is adult contemporary fiction. So this follows Eve and Sam who met as teenagers and they form a relationship and then they get married. They have an unplanned pregnancy and Sam, the father, is so thrilled, but Eve has found herself in her like worst nightmare and she's suddenly questioning the relationship, motherhood, and the two are confronted with how different they want their lives to be. And I always find these stories interesting, especially, you know, teenagers falling in love because I experienced that and obviously like so much can change. So it definitely interests me and it's about motherhood and sacrifice. It just sounds amazing. And Eve says, love and regret aren't mutually exclusive. Definitely the perfect adult contemporary I'm drawn to. How beautiful is this cover? Oh, I cannot wait to read it. And then I'm also super excited about Wayward by Amelia Hart. I hadn't heard of this book until I saw it in their selections and I was like, that sounds incredible, are you kidding? And this is fantasy historical fiction and I've definitely been feeling that fantasy pull lately so I'm really excited about it. And it's basically about three women and their connection to each other and the natural world. That just sounds like a dream. So yes, we follow the stories of these three women across five centuries, so from 1619 to 2019, and it's supposedly an enthralling novel of female resilience. Very excited about this. Ooh, Amelia Hart grew up in Australia, Australian queen. I'm just gonna read the prologue because I just quickly read it and wow. Also, really fun chapter headers. Look at like the bee and the crow. Okay, Alpha, 1619. 10 days they'd held me there. 10 days with only the stink of my own flesh for company. Not even a rat grace me with its presence. <laughs> there was nothing to attract it. They had brought me no food, only ale, footsteps. Then the wrench of metal on metal as the bolt was drawn back. The light hurt my eyes. For a moment, the men in the doorway shimmered as if they were not of this world and had come to take me away from it. The prosecutor's men, they'd come to take me to trial. <laughs> oh my God, I'm really excited about this. And it seems like it's inspired by this part in Macbeth. The wayward sisters hand in hand, posters of the sea and land, thus do go about about, thrice to thine, thrice to mine, and thrice again to make up nine. Peace, the charms wound up. Wayward is used in the first folio edition of Macbeth. Oh, in later versions, Wayward was replaced by weird. Fun! Very, very, very excited need to read this ACP. Another thing that I love about Book of the Month is that it is completely risk-free so you can skip any month at any time and you won't be charged. Plus they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction so you can get your first book for just $9.99 by using my code with Chloe. So I will leave a link to the website and my code below but yeah thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Okay so let's start with books that were sent to me either from publishers or gifts from friends. So <laughs> Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. How beautiful is this cover? Now, to be honest, when I first saw it, I was a bit terrified because obviously, like, creepy rabbit. I do love a bunny. I do love a rabbit. But 
it kind of scared me. But the more that I look at it, the more I'm like, you know what, it's actually stunning. <laughs> and you know, I just love like weird things. So I appreciate this cover a lot, especially because I'm sure it fits the vibe of the book. So this is the sequel to Ninth House, Billy Bodigo, which I really enjoyed. Read it years ago, contemplating rereading it before I read this because I'm quite hazy on the details of what happened, but it's basically a dark academia series. I am excited to continue reading about Alex Stern and this weird world. I love it. <gasps> oh, I don't know if I can say that without spoilers. But yeah, it's set at Yale University. Where is my arc actually? Wow, it came out in October 2019. Oh my god, how freaking amazing is that arc? I actually haven't looked at it in a while. Power, privilege, murder, enter the dark and decadent world of the Ninth House. We've been waiting a long time for the sequel, so I'm really excited to get into it. And thank you so much to Hachette for sending it my way. Oh, <gasps> Part one as above. Oh my god, does that mean part two is going to be so below? Exactly. Okay, now I have some books from Caitlin. Caitlin's always spoiling me and she got me some really fun books for my birthday slash Christmas slash just when she was here in Australia. So, how cute. This is Hopeless Romantic by Dolly Alderton. And I never even knew these existed. It's basically by The Pound Project. And it's like this really short, cute little book. And I believe this is just one of her essays about being a hopeless romantic, which I can relate to. Yeah, how cute. And then she got me Seeing Other People by Diana Reed. This is the author of best-selling novel, Love and Virtue, which I own and I've been really excited to read. Haven't read it yet. <laughs> But Caitlin and I were like, maybe we can do like a double feature where we read both books in one day because we both feel like we're going to love them. So this is an Australian author and Caitlin actually got me this beautiful signed copy. And basically this is a darkly funny story following two very different sisters and the summer that stretches their relationship almost to breaking point. You know I'm all about a sister story so... Thank you, very excited. Then she got me Drop Bear. Love this edition, it's so cute and it has like a million awards, so I have high hopes. Drop Bear interrogates the complexities of colonial and personal history with an alternately playful, tender and mournful intertextual voice. Definitely navigating the responsibilities that gather from sovereign country, the spectres of memory and the debris of settler coloniality. So it's a mix of poetry and essays and it offers an eloquent witness to the entangled present and uncompromising provocation of history and an embattled but redemptive hope for a decolonial future. So I'm very excited about this. And then when we were at the bookstore together in Sydney, we saw this book and we were like, wow, that's beautiful. And I was like contemplating if I should get it and Caitlin's like, I'm winning it for you. <laughs> so she got me this and I actually haven't opened it yet because I wanted to do it on camera. Obviously I've seen what it looks like inside in store, but well, let's do it. Okay, so this is new retro illustration, a beautiful art book. Like, are you kidding? Look how freaking cute, like it's actually insane. So I am so happy to have this and I'm going to put it at my gaming desk. Oh, <gasps> wow. Oh my God, actually insane. Honestly, one of my favorite ways to get inspired when I'm feeling a bit down or like, yeah, creatively uninspired is just like flicking through art books. So I'm very happy that I have this and I love it. And I love Caitlin, obviously. Then I was sent Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. I'm really excited about this because it's a sports romance, which I love. And this has been super popular on TikTok for ages and I've been curious about it. So I'm really happy that I finally have a copy so I can read it. And it's basically about this figure skater and this ice hockey player. Wow. So if you've read it, please let me know what you think. I am very excited. Then Kevin got me this book for my birthday, I believe. And this is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Tali Hibbert. I adore Tali Hibbert. I've read quite a few of her books and love them. I'm excited to see how she tackles like a YA romance because all the books that I've read from her have been adults and this is her first YA romance. And not gonna lie, I was a bit trepidatious because I was like, why are we doing YA? Because obviously she's so good at writing adult romance, but obviously follow your heart. Like if that's what she wants to do, I'll support it. But you know, I was just a bit like, oh, haven't been in the YA moment. You know, is it going to be as good as the romance, like the adult romance books? 
but I have seen quite a few good reviews so I'm excited and it sounds really fun. It's basically about this girl who is like a content creator but she wants to be a lawyer and this guy and they used to be best friends. He abandons her for the popular kids table. They don't speak for a while but then they are at this like survival course in the woods and they're forced together. So it's going to be like a second chance romance and yeah I'm very excited. Okay and then Beautiful Reader Bunny helped me get this book from the UK. So this is Beautiful Worlds Where Are You by Sally Rooney. If you saw my vlog, my recent vlog with Caitlin, then you would have seen this because I gifted one to Caitlin as well. But yeah, basically this is the beautiful new edition. Like it's like the holographic spine. Oh, I need to type this copy because it's so beautiful and this is one of my favorite books. Rita was in the UK so she got this for me and I am so thankful because I just love this book so much. And it's just like, yeah, it's so pretty. Like Wow, I love that book. I will try to have it linked below, but I don't know if you can get it online. Like I tried to find it before asking Rita, obviously, and there was like no place that I could get it. So it seems like you can only get it like in store in the UK. Anyway, I'm just so thankful to have it. Okay, then I have Yes, No, oh, is it Yes, No? Or maybe it's just Y slash N by Esther Yi. I received an email asking if I wanted a copy of this and I hadn't heard of it, but when I read the synopsis and more about it, I was like, oh, absolutely. Firstly, the cover is actually insane. It's basically a novel about a Korean American woman living in Berlin whose obsession with a K-pop idol sends her to Seoul on a journey of literary self-destruction. Are you kidding? Like, wow. And it's supposed to be surreal, hilarious, and shrewdly poignant. Yeah, very excited for this. Then Penguin Random House sent me This Time It's Real by Anne Liang. This is an arc, but it came out in February. And this is basically a rom-com about a girl who begins a fake relationship with the famous actor in her class. From up-and-coming Chinese-Australian author Anne Liang. It says if you like Jenny Han, you should like this book. And, you know, when I'm feeling in the mood for that kind of wholesome, cute, easy-to-read story, I will be going to this. Okay, so now for books that I bought myself. Our Work is Everywhere, an illustrated oral history of queer and trans resistance. Wow. I bought this book when I was at the bookstore. Like, I saw it and I was like, well, actually, Abby saw it, my friend Abby, saw it and was like, um, and then I was like, um, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're coming home with me. This is such a beautiful book and I feel like, you know, perfect coffee table book as well. And like, look how cool it is. I love the format and the illustrations. And this is specifically about queer and trans resistance in America. So a lot of different people came together for this to speak on things including Black Femme Mental Health, Pacific Islander Authorship, Fat Queer Performance Art, Disability and Healthcare Practice, Sex Worker Activism and the COVID-19 Pandemic. I am very excited to read it. Okay, then I bought The Winter Garden by Alexandra Bell. I mentioned this in my Top Books to Read in 2023 video because I definitely want to get to it this year. And it is a fantasy. And like I said, I've been really in that mood recently. And basically, on the night that Beatrice's mother dies, the mysterious and enchanting Winter Garden becomes her solace for seven days. I love a garden, especially like in a fantasy setting. So I'm really excited. And their garden disappears without a trace. So she wonders if it was ever real. But 18 years later, on the eve of her wedding to a man she doesn't love, she is like, you know what? No, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go find that garden. How fun is that? Then I did <laughs> a bit of a naughty thing. It's something I haven't done in years, but it was kind of thrilling. <laughs> Basically, I bought an entire series and I have not even read from this author. I haven't read the first book. Like, yeah. That's why it's risky and naughty because obviously what if I read the first book and I don't like it? But I guess in that case I can just sell the books or donate them so it's fine. I don't know, I just really felt the pull towards this series when I heard about it. The books are actually kind of hard to find as well. Like I could only find it on Amazon and it was like low stock and stuff so I was kind of like <laughs> what if it doesn't get reprinted so I just you know went for it. But basically that is the Boys of Tommen series. I heard of this series from Steph Bohr. She said it's like her favourite romance series and the way that she described it sounded really stunning and I don't know I just really felt like a stunning romance series where I fall in love with the characters and everything. So the first book is Binding 13 and basically this follows Johnny Cavanaugh who is a rugby player and it's a college romance. I don't know if I said that. So it's set at Tommen College and he is distracted by this girl, Shannon Lynch. Shannon has been bullied and tortured, so she arrives at college midway through the school year, praying for a fresh start. And on her first day, she comes into contact with Johnny and two teenagers from opposite sides of the tracks collide. So it's about friendship, first love, rising fame, horrifying secrets, and pain. Each book is really long, like over 500 pages, like nearly 600 pages. 
but from the reviews that I read, it seems like people just don't even want it to end. Like, that's how good it is. And that's how invested in the story people get. So hopefully it's amazing. The second book is Keeping 13. And the last book is Saving 6. And then I believe the fourth book is coming out next month. Or maybe this month. So hopefully I fall in love with the series. And then I can be, you know, on board when the future books come out. Like, that's so fun when you're waiting for the next book to come out, you know? <laughs> that's the meaning of life. I actually think I'm going to try to film a vlog where I read this series in a week. That would be really fun. So I plan to read these really soon. Okay, so similar to the art book that Caitlin got me, I also bought Neo Retro Illustrations. And I don't know if this is from the same creator. I'm not sure, but this one is so pretty. Once again, lots of stunning illustrations. Oh, like, look at that. I am just obsessed. So once again, I'm going to have this at my computer. So these two books will be, oh, beautiful. Then I bought Mother Thing, which I am really excited about because I've seen a lot of people say how incredible it is. And it is likened to Bunny. So obviously I will be reading. <laughs> it's supposed to be a smart hallucinatory book about mothers and daughters. One of my favorite things about Bunny is how it feels like a fever dream. So I'm hoping it has that same effect. And really fun cover. Like really, really fun. Then I finally got a physical copy of I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I'm actually so excited because I'm seeing Jeanette speak in person because she's coming to Sydney. So I'm really excited for that event. But yeah, I listened to the audiobook and fell in love and it was incredible. It is one of the best non-fiction books I've ever read so I highly recommend it if you're in the headspace to read it. It definitely has a lot of trigger warnings but basically Jeanette just talks about her life as a child actor growing up, her relationship with her abusive mother, her struggles with eating disorders, the entertainment industry, all of that. So yeah it's a really important story, super well written. It also manages to be funny at times as well so it's just like yeah it's so good like Wow. So I need to have a physical copy. Okay, then I got The Stolen Air by Holly Black, which is the first book in the series following the Folk of the Air series. So obviously I love that series and I'm excited for this. Although I actually haven't seen like too many people talk about it. Like I saw a few people read it when it first came out last month, but since then, not much. So if you've read it, let me know. I'm really curious. But basically this follows one of the characters from that first series and I just love the spells. I love the fae. Thank you. Like, I love Holly Black's writing. And Holly Black is the fairy queen. Yep, so this is set eight years after the finale. So, queen of nothing. Oh, thank you. I love these illustrations in her books. Okay, then I got some poetry, Black Queer Ho by Brittany Black Rose Capri. And this is a refreshing, unapologetic look at the line between sexual freedom and sexual exploitation, which is always something I'm interested in reading about. So yeah, I'm really excited. And finally, I have a horror manga, which I haven't opened yet. So once again, we can have our satisfying moment together. So I saw this at Books Kin of Kinea, and it says, Japan's Queen of Horror Manga returns. Obviously I know who the King of Horror Manga is, Junji Ito, well, the king in my eyes, but I haven't met the queen yet. <laughs> so I need to. Obviously I love my horror manga and basically this features six hair raising stories about unnerving characters and scenarios brought to life in Inuki's signature art style. Be very afraid of Kaneko Inuki. <laughs> love it. That's amazing, honestly. Like, imagine me releasing a book saying, be very afraid of Chloe Bunny. I would love that. Anyway, so those were the books that I have to haul today. Like I said, I'm very excited about all of these. And if you've read any of them, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But thank you so much once again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Don't forget you can get your first book for just $9.99 by going to bookofthemonth.com and using my code with Chloe. If you're looking for more content from me, I have a Patreon where I upload extra content like extra reading vlogs. We do a monthly live show. We do a monthly buddy read. This month we have buddy reading. Writers and Lovers by Lily King, which I'm so excited about. So if you want to join, I'll have my Patreon linked below. We discuss it in the Discord and I also film a spoiler filled vlog exclusive to Patreon. I have all my socials linked below, including my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash chloebunny underscore. And that is where I stream games and just chatting. Tonight I'm doing a fun reading and chatting stream, so I'm very excited for that. So feel free to come hang with the stunning people there. Thank you so much for your support always. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will hopefully see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.